<clears throat> Hi, um, if you're wondering who that person is in the video, it's me, Emily, um, thoroughly enjoying chrysanthemum tea. So a bit more of a background, uh, I'm a born and bred Singaporean and have been living in San Francisco for the past seven years of my life. I built a professional career here and um, I live right smack in the middle of this foggy city and I can't wait to show you more. See that? That's hot dog and yours soy milk. Alright, now I'm done eating. A little bit more background about myself. I started Dabao Singapore, a Singaporean hawker street food business in San Francisco last year. So I've taken this question, what does home mean to you, and turned it towards my community. To which they responded with so many different answers, which is so cute. But what I found that was like really, really adorable is this one coming right up. Old aunties and uncles screaming at you for your order one sec and then smiling at you. Who can relate at the hawker stalls? And I don't know about you, but as a millennial who went through O levels, a McSpicy double Milo and seaweed shaker fries with Power 98 playing over the radios is legit the most nostalgic home sensation. And Racial Harmony Day, isn't it so cute? We used to dress up in our traditional costumes and exchange cultural knowledge and then grow up to go to Zouk and then have bakute or spicy mee goreng after that. Oh, and who can forget? One dollar old chunky curry puff so you can tap all that with your 100 plus or Milo and go hang out at your friend's condo after school because it's such a hot day. <sighs> Oh, this one. Someone said, home is where my mom's cooking is. So I stumbled upon an old photo of me and my mom where I'm cooking and stirring the hot pot bowl with chopsticks. I guess she started me young lah because, you know, now I have a passion for food. Okay, surprise flashback time. Remember that scene in the fridge with the bread? Check this out. Ding ding ding, there's a Yakun Kaya toast spread. Let's talk a little bit about our habits and rituals here. I think as Singaporeans, it's very fundamentally right for us to go out and eat, you know, yakun kaya toast or go to a hawker stall and order whatever you want for breakfast. You know, but as an overseas Singaporean expat, there's no such thing as going to a hawker stall in San Francisco and ordering kaya toast, right? So here it is, me replicating the sensation of being in a hawker stall and having these fresh breads toasted, sliced, and made for me. Yum! <laughs> oh, seems like I'm cleaning the plate for some soft boiled eggs. <sighs> now, isn't it something familiar and something you grew up eating at least once in your life? The familiar flavors of kaya, butter, and soft boiled eggs with soy sauce. Look at me having a moment. Okay, okay, okay. Enough about me eating. I'm gonna go and show you where to buy ingredients for Singaporean dishes. Alright, now we're at the mouth of the tunnel that leads us to Chinatown and here we are coming from Union Square. All you have to do is follow the light at the end of the tunnel and you'll end up in Chinatown. How cute is that? I always thought that was really funny because, you know, Chinatown is basically my sanctuary for Chinese foods. Fun fact, San Francisco is pretty big on preserving art and culture and I'm really happy to see this mural up in Chinatown. Alright, back to the program. That's me being silly in Chinatown, expressive and artistic-like, haha. Uh -huh. Alright, uh, I will be showing you where I usually go to get my noodles and my soybean drink and my chrysanthemum tea. Let's go! Mmm, fresh loaves of bread, some fruits by the streets. Looks so familiar, right? Oh, all this talk's got me hungry again. Gotta stop for my xiaoya.
Okay, now we are at Sun Kao Shing Company on 1352 Stockton Street in San Francisco's Chinatown. This is where I usually go and have been going to for the past 7 years of my life for provisional goods. On the left you can see there are a bunch of different kinds of sauces and on the right are dried goods, mainly spices. Where I'm heading towards though is for a drink! Over here they have chrysanthemum tea and soy milk both of which are very reminiscent of my childhood in Singapore so I felt that this was especially apt that I was getting these drinks because this entire video is made for you my fellow Singaporeans and Singaporeans abroad Check it out, it's Yo's. Yo's made it this far all the way to San Francisco 8,000 plus miles away from Singapore Don't mind me just stopping to check and see what I need to restock in my pantry. Oh, seems like I've got nothing. I'm gonna go head out and check out. See you guys back home! So, it seems like the common consensus of what we think of when we think of Singapore is food, right? So imagine this. Remember the times when you're in Singapore when you have your kaya toast and egg and your milo but wait, you're feeling like you need more spice in your life so you decide to go and get some curry chicken and prata and then for lunch you decide to get something not so spicy so you have some Hainanese chicken rice but that's not enough, gotta eat some more on your way home you grab some sweet ham and onion bread the kind you can find at MRT you go home, have some baguette and blue cheese because you know you're winding down with some wine and then at the end of the day indomie because why not put a sunny side egg on top and call it a day okay 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 i gotta stop showing off all these foods i'm gonna show you how to make yu pian mi fen instead check it out okay so over here i have a little pomfret i actually have two uh, I'm going to show you roughly how to break down this little fish. First of all, you want to take your knife and cut off the head and gill area from under the fin. There you go. And after that, what we're going to do is make an incision in the belly so that it gives you access to getting out all the guts that we don't need or eat. Okay, so I'm going to take it to wash and clean and there you have it. A gutless fish. From then on, I'm going to show you how to break down the fish by cutting out the fillets from the middle of the body. That's kind of where their spine is at, honestly. Okay, so we're going to go from the spine down and outwards through the belly, make an incision on the top side of the fish and repeat and do the same thing from the spine and outwards as well. Be careful as you're slicing and always point it downwards to get the flesh out as much as possible and repeat the same for the other side. Once you're done with that, you want to clean up the fillets by removing the unwanted parts and with some TV magic, here we have some fillets you're going to put aside, clean your board and put the bones on your roasting pan so you can bake and caramelize to enrich the flavors of the bones before you put them in the oven. Put some oil on it though. Once you've oiled up your fish, put them in the oven for 30 minutes at 350. Meanwhile, slice up your fish into bite-sized portions and you're going to want to season your fish slices with some sesame oil, soy sauce and white pepper and let that sit for about at least 30 minutes before you cook them. Meanwhile, clean your board and slice up a little nubbin of ginger. You can put as much ginger as you want honestly. I like it to be quite gingery so I'm using quite a big amount. So slice them up into even slices and you're gonna want to air fry the ginger at 350 for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once that's done, add in some cloves of garlic and roast again for about 5 minutes until they all caramelize beautifully. Check this out. Ta da! Nice and golden. So now that that's done, I'm adding in my chicken stock into a pot of water. That's fish more right there, if you're wondering. 
it adds to the collagen of the soup. Following that, I'm going to be adding that ginger garlic mix that I've already toasted. And then I'm going to be scraping the fish bones into that pot. With all that in there, I'm adding in a little bit more water and covering it and letting it go on a rolling boil for at least 45 minutes to fully extract the flavours of the fish bones and the ginger and garlic. Now that that's done, I'm going to be taking out all the impurities and bones that I'm not going to need in my soup. And then I'm seasoning my soup with some fish sauce. You can add about 3 to 4 tablespoons depending on how you want it flavoured. And I'm going to put that in the back burner and let it simmer slowly to reduce to concentrate the flavours. Meanwhile, I'm putting my pot of water with some salt, bringing it up to a boil so that I can cook my rice noodles. This portion is enough for one because I'm just one person eating this at home in San Francisco. Bring that up to a boil, give it a little stir every now and then making sure that the noodles don't clump together. And now that that's done, we're going to start cooking the rest of the components. Here we've brought back the soup to the front burner so that you can see clearly. I'm going to be adding some fish balls. They're frozen as you can tell but it'll be fine, they'll soften up as the soup boils. Then I'm going to be adding some firm tofu. Why I use firm is so that when they boil, they don't disintegrate in the soup. Next, I'll be adding some vegetable stalks to the pot of soup because the stalks are firmer, they take longer to cook. Following that, I will scoop it out just so they don't overcook and then put them on my bowl. And then the rest of the choy sum leaves can go in there. Taking note not to overcook them as well. They cook really, really fast. So take them off and put them on your bowl as well. I've fished out all the vegetables. I'm going to be placing my marinated palm fret fish into the hot boiling water, making sure not to overcook them. So I'm very gently stirring them and dipping them in the broth so that they get lightly poached. And I'll fish out the rest of the ingredients that by now would have had some flavour incorporated into them. The next step is to put your evaporated milk into the soup. This is what gives the UPME and that milky flavour. Add as much as you want or as little as you want. Followed by some hua tiao tiu, which is a trick that my parents taught me actually. I had no idea what I was eating when I was younger. So there you have it, a bowl of fish soup noodles that's relatively easy to make honestly. Um, this isn't some super high level dish, it just takes some time as you have to break down the fish and roast the bones. But each step is filled with love and you'll be able to taste it once you eat it at home. Don't forget to garnish with green onions as well as some crispy shallots. Crispy shallots really bring out the aroma of the soup and followed by some white pepper for some heat. And to top it off, some sesame oil. And once it hits the hot soup, it opens up really nicely and your nose will be perfumed with sesame aroma. And there you have it. It's my solo bowl of Yupia Mi Fen cooked at home in the heart of San Francisco, California in the United States of America. Look at that face. It's a face of... Wow, I really miss home. But wait, what's a meal without a drink? And I'm back with a drink, my chrysanthemum tea. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. What I think of home and what home means to me basically is my community and food and foods that I grew up with. So here's my Yupia Mi Fen. I hope you enjoy it with me.